Hello everyone, Adam here from Vector3D and today we're at Formnext 2019. This time we're at the Anisoprint booth, the Anisoprint booth with Yevgeny. Can you start by letting us know what it is you do at Anisoprint? We are at Anisoprint, make the continuous carbon fiber printer. So we are producer of the machines. We are make the, our own materials. It's uh, continuous carbon fibers. So we uh, laid up uh, during the printers. Uh, also, we have our own software for this slicing. It's not the usual FFF slicer, but to lay up the fibers, we need to fix some other parameters, just unusual one. We also uh, have two different kind of uh, fibers, uh, different kind of machines, the model lines, that's the main goals of our work. Laying fibers into print then, why, why is it important, why is it uh, useful to be able to lay fibers into a print? Uh, so if you need to increase properties of your parts, so if you are not uh, happy using just uh, the plastic one parts that, uh, that have a lot of breakage during the uh, heavy loads, so uh, you try to in increase the properties uh, for bending, for tension or compression, so oh, it's uh, uh, strength to weight ratio uh, up to uh, 20 times than the regular plastic one and uh, up to 5 times that uh, uh, aluminum. So uh, if you need to change the metal one parts in your uh, construction in your machine to the uh, additive one with the difficult forms, with the difficult geometry and uh, some uh, uh, and you want to s uh, increase some properties in uh, any area in your part so you can uh, uh, easily adjust the, uh, the strengths of the parts in the each layer so uh, you can use uh, fibers on the top layer, on bottom layer or you can make some uh, you know, uh, infills with the different kinds. We have the five, ty five types of infills on the parts. Uh, you can see rhombic, an isogrid, is isotropic, uh, oh, isogrid, sorry. <laughs> and uh, to uh, increase the properties in one direction, for example, that you know the loads are works. There are uh, lots of polymers that are used to carbon fibers and the glass fibers that uh, have been chopped and uh, just uh, in, uh, uh, fills the regular thermoplastic. So you uh, increase the properties, of course, but uh, not to uh, get the, the high properties of the materials. So the the continuous fibers you can lay in in a specific way which you can use using software to optimize strength in specific directions whereas i guess with uh, kind of fiber filled materials with all cut and chopped fibers it's just everywhere which changes the properties but not in a controlled way and not with the same level of effectiveness yes uh, you, they usually uh, clients try to uh, uh, find some ways to increase the properties but uh, you print the uh, like an you need you want to print like azotropic material so you uh, have any uh, one direction load so you just spread out the uh, properties so uh, you uh, print also plastic parts uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really increased some properties but uh, not too much and uh, uh, for example you know that uh, uh, we can also use the chopped one if you want, <laughs> so it uh, really have the good surface. If you need to finish your parts to look pretty, so uh, you also can use any materials in our machines. So you can use glass fiber fields, carbon fiber fields, uh, the all trends nowadays. <laughs> So you don't even have to make the choice with yours, you can use the carbon field and lay continuous fibers. Yeah, yeah. So you, inc you increase the properties by our carbon fiber, but they have the good surface finish with, uh, with the carbon fields or glass field. So you mentioned there that you have a couple of different uh, fibers. What, what are those different fibers that you have and what are the, what are the differences between and why would you choose one over the other? Uh, so in uh, our material line we have the uh, continuous carbon fiber and also uh, continuous basalt fiber. Uh, uh, who knew this is uh, the basalt is a magma ore uh, in a simple way. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, it's the same properties like a glass fiber, continuous glass fiber. If you wanted to uh, print the stronger parts but not to not need uh, the uh, the highest properties that you can get from our machines you can buy the cheap cheap one uh, basalt fiber and uh, also have the uh, less pr mechanical properties uh, it's uh, really little higher than the glass fiber continuum glass fiber so that that basalt which is the the lower cost alternative is also a little bit more flexible right so does that give you some other advantages when you're printing so although it's less strength 
because it's more flexible, right, you can draw maybe finer features with it? No, it also has the one uh, good feature for the uh, uh, radio equipment. It's also radio transparency. So if you want to make some fairings or uh, you want to make the boxes for a radio equipment, it's uh, clearly radio transparency. So we have the uh, certificate of this, so you can use it uh, at any uh, I know any cases that you want to work with the uh, waves. So the, the polymers then that you print into, are there specific polymers that work particularly well with laying carbon into, or is it just any polymers that are typically used with 3D printers could also be used on your machines? Uh, our machines allow us to use any uh, thermoplastic up to a uh, temperature of processing uh, 270 degrees Celsius. So uh, uh, you can use any uh, trend uh, thermoplastic in the market, so TPU, PTG, PLA, uh, etc. So uh, we are open to uh, some of our clients test uh, their own plastics, so you can adjust parameters, make your own profile. Also, we have the approved profile from uh, our suppliers, so uh, we try to uh, increase the material lines that we can use. We just test something new that we have on the market. So, uh, as I mentioned, the carbon field, glass field, fiber field is also comparable. You just need to switch the nozzle and test it. How does your machine actually lay that fiber into the into the actual print itself? That sounds like quite a complicated process to, to get right and to get consistent. We have the print head with uh, two extruders. Uh, one extruder is a clear plastic extruder for a thermoplastic, like a usual FFF. Uh, uh, but uh, we have the second one, the composite extruder with cutter or for the fiber. So we have the two uh, inner uh, uh, inputs uh, for the carbon fibers and the thermoplastic. So it allows us to uh, verify the volume fracture of the fibers that we get in the uh, real and uh, the finished part uh, so we can uh, uh, make the cross section of the fibers it's allow us to uh, spread the properties uh, uh, during the parts and uh, not uh, uh, correctly uh, one direction uh, not directly one direction but uh, uh, to have a rhombic field different kind of uh, isograte fields that uh, spread out the characteristic of the carbon fibers that uh, increase the properties in a different uh, direction uh, so uh, also we have a cutter we have the uh, we have to cut uh, the fibers on the edge layers to print the uh, clear and pretty external shells with plastics uh, so uh, you uh, can uh, uh, slice it, uh, the the parts uh, uh, and to the any types of the patterns uh, uh, that we get uh, for the fibers and uh, um, make some clear plastic layers and uh, also try to print something uh, that we just uh, uh, mentioned before with the solid infills like uh, typical uh, composite sheets you know so uh, as you wish so it looks like you've got obviously as you mentioned, there's there's two kind of extruders here, one that's just polymer and one that's mixed. They It looks like they get mixed in the hot end area. So the polymer and uh, your fiber both come into the hot end area. And once they're there, they kind of meet at the nozzle and come out all in one go. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, we call it the co-extrusion process where uh, the fibers and the thermoplastic polymers, also liquid, uh, uh, met uh, at the nozzles uh, the extruder and uh, laying up on the part uh, and the uh, and then uh, um, produced the uh, finished part uh, with uh, real composite so uh, it's uh, our know-how with uh, which we uh, uh, suggest to use uh, for get the real tonk parts so uh as, as we're all aware, there is definitely another company that seems to do something similar. What are the key differences? What is the advantage of your, your method over, over theirs? Yeah, I get it. Briefly, there's uh, several advantages that we have. We are open system, so you can use any polymers that you have in the market. The cheapest one, expensive one, so you can use your, your favorite material. So uh, also, because of we have the can the verify the volume fracture of the fiber and the and end part, we can uh, make the some lattice structure. Lattice structure is the best way to use the composites because of uh, compression and tensile uh, strength of, of the ribs. The ribs uh, works in one direction. So if you uh, make the lattice structure, you are use uh, composites in the best way that you can. Uh, also, we are, uh, have the. Uh, open software that you can use freely to use for your own uh, 
FFF uh, home printer, for example. Uh, it also has some features that you can use and you uh, send it live, just decrease the time of print, so the micro, micro lays. Uh, this is uh, the good feature to decrease the time of print. Um, we are uh, uh, open to, for the clients that uh, work by their own. Uh, uh, they uh, want to uh, have a lot of NDAs clients, so uh, uh, that's a totally local machine that you can use and your labs or your sciences or uh, if you're scientists at the university you just work with it uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, support systems uh, that uh, uh, allows us to work uh, more closer to our clients so we can ask them any question about our technology uh, uh, we can then provide some uh, information about the, uh, the, our composites uh, so we can just uh, easily get the uh, any numbers that you want so uh, to understand how the materials works and what you get in the final parts so taking a look at your machine then you got one machine here behind us what what kind of build volume are we looking at what's the kind of largest parts we can get in your machines yeah this model is called composer a3 uh, this is a bigger one in our model line we also have the smaller one with a4 a4 and a3 the, the format of the paper for the drawing uh, everyone uh, who work with it know the uh, dimensions so i repeat <laughs> uh, the a4 it's uh, 200 210 by 297 and the height is uh, 150 millimeters so uh, the biggest uh, the bigger one uh, have the uh, 420 millimeters uh, uh, the new model had the 460 and the uh, by 297 and the 215 millimeters by Z uh, so it's Corex Y uh, mechanic machines uh, is uh, can uh, have, it have the uh, hidden table uh, and also switching mechanism for changing the extruder from FFF to CFC extruder. Uh, have a little wipe station uh, for not uh, to prevent losing uh, on the parts. So um, what is it? We have there our own uh, uh, custom uh, feeder for the composites that we are used for uh, uh, the composite printing. Um, also, interface from SD card, <laughs> like very comfort for uh, printers users uh, today. So the control board and stuff that drives all of this, is, so, is that something you've designed in-house or is that from somebody else? Yeah, we use the 32-bit system uh, for uh, our goals and also had some uh, custom uh, PCBs uh, for uh, increase some uh, type of the thermistors, of the heaters. Um, the, work a lot of it uh, so we have our own decision but uh, we also try to make uh, some new features so we can change it easily because we have the, our own production of the PCB so uh, we can um, change the models to update the, some um, uh, hardware features. Thank you very much for your time today it's been yeah. great to learn about your prints and all these kind of specialties of putting fibers into prints it's been great meeting you thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content from Formnext 2019. I'll see you in the next one.